So traditional neural networks are great at categorizing data. Ask it what the image contains and it will make a reasonable prediction based on what it learned during training. You can ask it whether this image is a 7 and it will make a prediction based on what it learned. But there's another class of neural networks which can do the exact opposite of this which is to generate an image based on a specific instruction. So you can give an instruction like write a 0 and it will write a 0 for you as an image. And these class of neural networks are called generative adversarial neural networks. Now that we understand the premise of generative adversarial networks or GANs for short, what we are trying to do is take some random controlled noise and generate an image out of it. But initially, obviously, since our network is not trained, it may just produce some random noise out of it. So we add a next network to our architecture, which can distinguish between random noise and real looking images. Once we have this network in place, we can just train this network to get better at identifying real images from random noise. After a couple of rounds of training, it gets very good. And then we can train the initial part of the network to produce noise in such a way that it can fool the second network. The first network is called a generator as it generates images from random noise. And the second network is called a discriminator as it tries to distinguish between what is real and what is just generated from random noise. Training GANs is cyclic. So every time generators becomes better at producing a real image, we train the discriminator again, forcing the generator to get even better at producing images, which look even more real. So we cycle through these steps of training where we train discriminator once and then generator once and then discriminator once again until the point where the images which are produced by generator are completely indistinguishable from the ones that are original. As GAN is a widely researched area, there are many different kinds of GANs. Simple GANs, DC GANs, conditional GANs, cycle GANs, style GANs, and super resolution GANs. So let's look at each of them in detail and try to understand the intuition behind it by starting with a simple GAN and implementing it in Python. So we start off by simply importing our dependencies. These will be the different Keras layers and other plotting libraries. Next up, we want to see if a GPU is available and we can use it. So let's check if we have a GPU. And yes, do we do have a GPU. So we can now load our data onto the GPU and for that we'll need to open a mirrored strategy. Then under the scope of this strategy, we can load our data. Our, our data is just the digits data, which is 10 different digits, uh, which are handwritten and then converted into images. And then their labels are from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 up until 9. So these are small 28 pixel by 28 pixel images. So let's see one of them. Yeah, so this is a 5. And just like this, you have many other images. This is a 5. This is a 7. And the network we are training is trying to write an image which looks almost like these handwritten digits. Next up, we want a function to generate random noise. So we'd be just generating a random Gaussian noise. So this method will help us generate a random noise of desired shape and size. Um, so you can pass it a shape and size and it'll generate that noise. And for now we are generating a noise uh, which is Gaussian distributed with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So every item in this uh, data matrix would be a number between minus one and one. And with that done, we can finally now describe our networks. So first let's describe the discriminator network. So to start with this discriminator network is a simple feed forward neural network with the four fully connected layers and the final layer just having one neuron. So this network will predict a zero if it thinks that the image is just garbage and random noise and one when it thinks the input image is actually one of the images of a handwritten digit. And then there are non-linear activations in the layer and we have used a leaky ReLU with a 0.2 leaky ratio. And takes in as input a 28 cross 28 pixel image. Next up is our generator network 
So for generator network also we are using a simple feed forward neural network with uh, four dense layers which are fully connected and similarly for non-linearity here also we will use a leaky ReLU with an alpha of 0 0.2. You can see the last layer of this particular neural network is a 28 by 28 image so it takes in a random noise of 100 dimensions and then inputs an image which is 28 pixels by 28 pixels same as our original images in the data set. Now we are ready to compile our models. So let's go ahead and define the optimizer first. I'm going to be using Adam W optimizer, but you can use any other optimizer of your choice like RMS prop or anything else. As long as you make sure that the learning rate of your optimizer is not too large as large learning rates tend to destabilize GAN trainings. Uh, in this particular case, I have used 0.002 as learning rate. Then we'll use the methods we defined to instantiate our models. So we will instantiate the discriminator and the generator networks. Then we'll compile our discriminator network with a binary cross entropy loss and the Adam optimizer that we just defined. Next, we use the functional API in Keras to then take the output from the generator and then feed it into a discriminator and make a big new model out of that and then compile that again using the optimizer we defined and binary cross entropy loss. So this is the whole network that we have which takes on one end takes noise as input and on the other end it will try to predict whether the hidden state that was produced was that an image or was that a noise. With the models compiled and ready to go we can start the training now. Uh, but training GANs is not as simple as just calling the dot fit method. We'd have to define the training loop ourselves since we are training on small batches of data and training different subparts of the network. So we'll define the number of epochs and the number of batch batches we want to train and then individually sample batch size amount of noise and batch size amount of real images from the data set. We combine these generated images and noise images to first generate to first train our discriminator network so that it can identify between real images and just random noise. And the labels while training this discriminator would be zeros for all the fake images that we have generated and one for all the real images that we sampled from our data set. So we'll combine them into one tensor and then use that as our label. So now we can use this mini batch of data to first train our discriminator. We are using train on batch function instead of the dot fit method which is more widely used. Next up we now make our discriminator free frozen. So we set its trainable value to false and then now it's time to gener train our generator network. For that we we'll use the input noise as x values and the target this time will be 1. So we'll say that all the images that are getting generated are real images and appropriately update the losses in the GAN network. Let's also add some extra conditions so that we can visualize the training. So after every five epochs, uh, let's sample some random images while training so that we can visualize how the training progresses. So let's see the results now. Okay, starts from noise and slowly starts becoming sort of numbers, but, but not really very high quality images as they are present in our training set. And to improve this, we'll use the second type of GAN, which is called DC GAN or deep convolution GAN. Now to turn, convert our original GAN into a DC GAN, all we have to do is replace the discriminator with a deep convolution network. So we have removed all of the dense layers with conv 2D layers. So now we are have we now we have a discriminator which takes convolutions of the images to determine whether a given image is noise or whether a given image comes out of the original data set or not. Similarly, for generator also, we'll remove all of the dense layers and replace them with convolution layers and upsampling layers so that the 
quality of images that are generated by the disk by this generator is much better than what we had when we were using just 10 layers. So now let's use this network and retrain the model again and see what the results are. So the results are certainly better. The images are more crisper. You can clearly figure out what's four, what's six, some threes, ones and twos. But a big problem still remains that we have very little control on how noise is getting transformed. We don't know whether it's going to write a four or it's going to write a six. And we want more control on that. And to fix that, we'll use the third type of GAN, which is conditional GAN. So to convert our DC GAN into conditional GAN, we first have to change our discriminator a little. So the final layer of the discriminator will now have 10 neurons. And each of these neurons now will associate themselves to one of the classes in our input, input data. So it'll output zero if the digit is zero, it'll output one if the digit is one and so on and so forth. And the last neuron will output one if the image is a noisy image. Next up, we also want to update the input layer of our generator. So instead of inputting a hundred dimensional noise, we now only input 20 dimensions of noise and 10 dimensions of one hot encoded vectors, which will give us more control on what the network is going to write. So we can give it a one hot encoding of zero if you want to write a zero, one hot encoding of one if you want to write a one and so on and so forth, which will give us more control on what the final output from this generator network is. Next up, we need to add the changes in our training loop. So since this is a conditional GAN now, we also have to add the labels into the training data. The upside is, the downside is that now you need labels to train your GAN. Uh, but the upside is that you get more control over what the GAN is producing. So, so first of all, we'd have to sample batch size number of indexes so that we can index into our training data set. Then we use these indexes to, to generate the labels. So for all the fake images, the label would be 10. And for all the real images, we'll index, we'll sample them based on the index. And then we stack them side by side for the final labels. For the input noise as well, we have to now stack it alongside the actual labels so that the generator can uh, consume both the noise and the label values. And then we use now this new input noise to then generate the images from our generator so that when so that then we can use it to train our discriminator now we can get rid of the x new that we had generated earlier and now use the new generated image to train the discriminator also for the generator instead of the old target we'll now use y real let's train and look at the results although the quality of results isn't dramatically different but now we have more control on what the generator generates based on the input that we give it now let's look at some of the other type of gans namely cycle gan up until now we have been taking noise and then transforming it into one of the images but a more widespread problem is to take a image and then transform it into some other domain for example you may want to take a satellite image and then convert it into a street view to use in your product. Such a network is easy to train as it is easy to find pairs of images with both the satellite view and the street view. But problem becomes much more difficult if you want to transform one domain of images into another. So let's say you want to transform an image of horses into an image of zebras. But training such a network is almost impossible because you can never collect pairs of images of horses and zebras where they are in similar orientations and positions. But CycleGAN seems to solve this seemingly looking impossible task. So we take our original GAN and instead of noise we pass an image of a horse as input and try and predict an image of a zebra. Now our discriminator's job is to then predict whether this image is now a zebra or not a zebra. The problem still isn't solved because the, the generator network can simply fool the discriminator by every time generating the same zebra again and again. To solve this problem, we then convert the zebra back into a horse image and make sure that that horse's image is as close to the original image as possible. 
the cyclic nature of taking the original image transforming it and then transforming it back into the original image is what gives the cycle gan its name and the training process is exactly the same where we train different parts of the sub sub network one at a time apart from cycle gan the two other types of gan that we have style gans and super resolution gans follow similar principles but gives you more control on how how the training occurs and super resolution gan just has way higher number of parameters so that you can train much deeper networks and get much higher quality of images out of it it uses resnet blocks of convolution networks stacked on top of one another and could have millions or even billions of parameters gans are a hot topic of research and nvidia has always been at the forefront in part because they have access to a huge pool of gpus and accelerated computing hardware and a big pool of deep learning researchers so if you want to train your own gan all you need is two things one which is access to a gpu and two lots and lots of patience as training gans is more an art form than science finally i leave you with some cool gan generated artwork to enjoy